Hi everyone, violinist Giora Schmidt here, and in these sessions we're going to cover your right hand and bow technique. There's the famous story of someone coming up to the great Yasha Heifetz after a concert and saying, Mr. Heifetz, your violin sounded wonderful tonight. And he holds it up to his ear and says, funny, I don't hear anything. It doesn't matter if you play a $50 violin or a $10 million violin, without proper understanding of the right hand, its fundamentals, down to the muscles, your voice and your tone will elude you. Let's start with the grip. There are two basic schools, Franco-Belgian, which is kind of what I use, and Russian, which is kind of more clumped together. But Russian, I like to think of as more specifically connected to the great teacher Leopold Auer, whose students were Heifetz, Milstein, Elman, Zimbalist. So if you look at the physicality of it, the bow sits between this joint and the base of the knuckles. So it's a deeper hold. And when you come down to the application of it, you're relying more on speed to transition between down bow and up bow. How Heifetz did it still eludes me. Now, Franco-Belgian in profile is more like a letter C for cushion, for concentration of sound. It's reliant on more pressure and wrist and finger follow through for the connection between down bow and up bow. Getting further into the bow grip, and since I play in what is considered the Franco-Belgian way, let's explore that a little bit further. Now, you want your hand to be as relaxed and loose as possible. Don't make a fist, don't have any tension in your hand, just kind of imagine that if your arm is sitting on a shelf. Now with the wrist loose and the fingers dangling, get yourself a Sharpie. I love showing this with a Sharpie because it's a little bit fatter than the bow and a little bit more comfortable to literally get your fingers around and start to grasp this concept. I want you to turn your hand around and I want you to have your thumb bent and meeting the middle finger so that you have this. This is kind of your center balance point here. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie again and the fingers just rest on this fairly evenly in the same way that your hand would just kind of rest on your knee or up here. I'm not doing anything extraneous with my fingers. There's no tension. There's just how your hand kind of curves naturally when you hold it upside down is the same way that it's gonna live when it's right side up when holding the bow. Nothing complicated with this. But again, with the Sharpie, you'll feel kind of a nice balance and you don't have to worry about the length of the bow for that kind of seesaw effect because it's all right here in your hand. So with your hand relaxed and the Sharpie in your hand, you can sort of turn it around and look at it for yourself and see that the thumb and the middle finger should be kissing. And then when you turn it back right side up, you'll see that everything is kind of within grasp. Nothing extraneous, no extra shifts or spreading of the fingers or anything. The same way that it would just be, I don't know, resting on your knee or resting on the couch or just kind of anything, you know, sometimes even holding a bottle of water. Look at that. That's your bow grip right there. To practice, you can even do this while watching Netflix if you like. Hold the Sharpie and just extend your fingers and retract your fingers. Extend and retract, extend and retract. This burns about one calorie an hour, so you can have kind of one potato chip at a time while you're doing it. <laughs> but it's really a great way to start to introduce flexibility to your hand. Because very often we think that the minute we hold the bow, we have to turn into this kind of frozen scarecrow type of thing sound is flexible so we should be flexible in trying to execute the sound especially from the right hand the way the muscles work 
deeply contribute to the type of sound that comes out of the instrument, believe it or not. So the more you can kind of become familiar with this flexibility, this spongeability, this cushion, that nothing is rigid in your application, the better sound you will have. Now, let's take from the Sharpie to the bow directly. Shake your hand out. Make sure it's nice and relaxed. Let it dangle in front of you. Now, simply put your thumb in here. Index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky. Now, key point. Index finger in the Fanco Belgian. Not too deep. You want right between the first joint and the second joint. Right in the middle. Sitting there. I tell my students, I want to see a hump. If there's no hump, you're not doing it right. <laughs> so, right there. And what that does is it enables you to have this kind of seesaw motion. See, if the finger is too deep, you can't actually rock the bow with the hand alone. So the way to kind of gut check it, if you will, is if you scoot the index finger back, you'll see that all of a sudden, the bow's inherent weight is doing the work for you. This is expensive equipment. You want to let some of the you want to let it work for you a little bit. You don't have to drive it all the time. So the minute that you put the bow on the string, you're going to start to feel this kind of push and pull action, which we'll get into a little bit later. 